Um, welcome back to episode two, guys, of Candid Chats with CNC. I'm Colleen. And I am Chris. And today we're going to be talking about relationships. <laughs> you <laughs> and SpongeBob. <laughs> oh, yes. And what a wonderful topic to talk about. <laughs> I know. I love that we're diving like right into something this big for our second episode. I know. I feel like it's going to be interesting because we both came from two different scales. Yes. Yeah. Relationships. We both have very, I'd say we have different opinions about relationships because of the way that we've gone about it. And yeah, yeah. And that's what's interesting about our friendship is this is something that we like have done completely different. So mm-hmm. if I haven't been through something, Chris has and vice versa. So we definitely have a lot of topics to cover today. Mm-hmm. For sure. Okay. Well, before we get started, Colleen, we both have had pretty decently busy days. What'd yeah. you do? How is um, it? So I'm in a different setting, obviously, than what I was last week. <laughs> um, I am not at school. I am not at UK right now. So I'm actually at my parents' house in Ohio, where Chris in our hometown where Chris and I grew up at. So this is technically my childhood bedroom. Um, I lived here since I was a freshman in high school. So um, I am up here because I am um, reaching finals week, and I am doing my final capstone project on... Um, Lyme disease, which a lot of people in our hometown have. So I've been running around all day today, interviewing people and getting footage and trying to get all of my final school stuff wrapped up. So it's been fun. Yeah. Busy. (laughs) And it was 83 degrees today though, which was really, like, it was beautiful weather. It was super windy though, but it was really pretty weather here. Yeah. We, it got up to 84 here today. Um, it was a little cooler in the morning, but then once it hit like noon is really nice. Yeah. One of those days that I could go back and forth between working at my desk and then going into the living room, opening up the sliding glass door and enjoy. So nice. And you, you went on a hike today, right? So you got to enjoy, or I got not hiking a stroll. (laughs) Yeah. A walk. Yeah. Um, Rachel, who is uh, one of our friends from our hometown, her and I, also live in the same apartment complex, but um, we, since it's been nicer outside, we have been trying to go out and do more things that are safe. And so we went on a three mile walk today and I moved here um, to the DC area in Arlington in November, but haven't really got a chance to walk around a ton. So it was nice. We went over to the national landing area and found this one spot. And it seemed like a lot of people were walking and then also there were a lot of bikes. And so we're bet, like, yeah. what is that? What are, where, where are they going? <laughs> and so we were like, let's follow, let's just go walk. So we were we started walking and then we saw this like tunnel and we were like, oh, okay. So we just went on and went ahead. And then we ended up walking down uh, by uh, George Washington Parkway towards Alexandria but like obviously didn't walk that far that's too far but went over and wrapped around and walked by Reagan National International Airport and then got a nice DC scenic view and everything it was really nice and we were able to walk back and of course went and got some McDanks afterwards (laughs) as one does (laughs) right as one does yeah so and today really wasn't like a meeting heavy day for work so it was also pretty good I know I kept having to remind myself that today was Tuesday. I was getting very Monday vibes today, which I don't know why, because we both were exhausted yesterday. We actually were going to film this episode yesterday and yeah. like seven o'clock rolled around and we both were like, uh, I'm working on final projects. He was working on work stuff. And we were like, no, we're not going to do this today. <laughs> not today. Too tired. Want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I texted him yesterday and I was like, today is the most Monday, Monday, how I can't even say it. Monday is Monday ever. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. 110%. Yeah. But also had some time to do some researching and potentially found a place for me to live next year after my Yes. Research. Yes. He just showed it to me and it looks super pretty. I know. I'm excited because um, as most of the listeners probably know, DC living is so expensive and it is insane. So for no reason. <laughs> I know. Just because it's DC and they can. Yeah, because it's DC and they can. Yeah. But it's like one of the most expensive places to live in the United States. Yes. yes. Like I understand because it's the nation's capital and like I get all that, but it's just like really? Like yeah. why? 
Yeah. Right. It's just one of those cities that a, mo- a lot of money is flowing in and out of at all times. Yeah. So I've been kind of wanting to, I love living in this area in Pentagon City because there's so much stuff around. Like I can walk across the street and go to Whole Foods and like it's mm-hmm. nice and it's fine. But I also am excited to potentially go a little bit outside so I can have more of like a residential like neighborhoodish feel. I yeah. Guess. So, and the place that I'm looking at would be, I could get a two bedroom and have an office in a den space for less than what I'm paying here for a one bedroom. So. Yeah, well, I remember when you moved into the place that you're in now and I feel like you like didn't even like hunt a super long time. Like it was just like, okay, I like this. And like, it was November. So the pandemic was, you know, hitting hard and I think right. stuff was moving really quick and you were just like, okay, well, I like this and it's going to work. So we'll fi- I'll get out there and then just figure it out from there. Yeah, that was because I came here for my first day of work and then I went back to Ohio, worked remotely for a while until graduation and then was apartment hunting. I toured an apartment here, which is actually next door to where I'm living Mm -hmm. and liked it, but it was also like a couple hundred dollars more expensive than what I'm paying now. But then also I wasn't a big fan of their management because they weren't (laughs) nice when I went on my tour and I was like, ah no (laughs) like if I'm not having a great experience when I'm touring probably not going to have a great experience living no so I ended up it would I found out that it wasn't going to work out and I was just like I just don't want to do that it was like three or four days later after I came back and um I called this place because then I immediately got on apartments.com and was like, <laughs> what is in my budget and that I like and has everything that I want because I also like really wanted a balcony which is like pr- decently common here but also you have to find the right place because if you get like a studio or like a one bedroom sometimes they don't offer them yeah so I was like I know that I want that and I want it in unit washer and dryer like I don't have to worry about like going to a facility and stuff like that so I called this place, explained my whole story. I was stressed out on the phone and they were like, we got you. We got you. Everything's going to be good. And it has been. So I am appreciative. And then I was like, all right, I'm just going to do it. They're having like a two month free rent thing. And I, I need to take it before like it runs out because yeah, I'm lucky because I moved in November and December. So that's when like a lot of people don't like mm-hmm. move. So they have a lot of specials and stuff. So I got lucky. <laughs> yeah, it worked out. It worked out. Yeah. Yeah, and your apartment's super cute. And like, it works great for it just being oh, you. Yeah. yeah, for it just being me, it's really nice. I mean, sometimes I wish that it was a little bigger, but like also get what you get. Yeah. And I mean, it really works for me and I'm happy. Well, and even when I stayed out there with you for like, what was it, five or six days? I mean, mm-hmm. we were totally, I didn't feel like we were on top of each other. No, and like, that was a point where, you weren't even back to classes yet after New Year, Mm-mm. and I was working. So we we had a schedule of yep. I would get up at eight, go out into my living room, dining room area, work for mm-hmm. until lunch. Yeah, and then I would roll out of bed around like a, between like eleven and noon, and then we would flip we swap <laughs> spots so I could use my desk. <laughs> so I could watch Netflix in the living room <laughs> because that is one thing that I don't let. Love here is obviously my bed. It, yeah. I work yeah. and sleep in the same room. And that's just not like how my brain works. Well, they say it's not the best for you because like that's why they say not to do homework in your bed because then your brain, you know, fo- like is used to it and like it's like, okay, like we're in bed. Like, okay, we're doing homework though. Like we're supposed to be sleeping. So you definitely should like divide the two. Right. And like that's how it was when I lived in Columbus and went to Ohio State my desk and my bed were right next to each other. Actually, I think it was just like this. Mm -hmm. And um, I got like, I mean, it's fine. I get my work done and everything like normal, but it's just what affects it is sleeping. Because Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I don't know, some study, one of my friends showed me says, you're only supposed to sleep and lounge and like watch TV in your bedroom. And Mm -hmm. watching TV is questionable. Yeah, yeah. And then- that's what the bedroom is supposed to be for, like complete peacefully, like being at peace and just like being relaxed. Yeah. And then workspace is supposed to be elsewhere because then it just like messes you up, which I think it does mess me up because I do have some problems like trying to go to sleep sometimes because mm-hmm. I'm thinking about work. 
Yeah. Well, that's how I am. Cause I, like, I'm obviously at my desk in my room right now, but I like usually only ever do my makeup here. Like whenever I do do schoolwork at my parents' house, I always sit at the dining room table and we're at school. I'm like you, where my desk, you know, I do my homework right beside my bed. And it definitely makes a huge difference because I literally am only in my bedroom at home to get ready to go somewhere to do my hair and makeup and change or to sleep. And I definitely feel like my quality of sleep here, I fall asleep so much faster. And I think that that's why. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, but fingers crossed, hopefully this place like works out or I find a roommate of once, it's going to be somebody that I already know, but like live in with somebody else and like we're able to get like a place that has like an extra space for like an office or whatever. So I don't have to worry about that. Yeah. But we shall see. All right. Well, that was a little bit about our day. So let's get into the topic, relationships. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I will take it away. <laughs> so out of the two of us, um, I am the only one that's been in a long-term and serious relationship. Um, but the timing of it was really weird. So I was a sophomore in high school and he was a freshman and we dated for like three or four months, broke up for the summer and then dated from my September of my junior year to... December of my sophomore year of college. So that was a total of four years almost, if you count the first breakup, but it was like three of like a solid run. But yeah, it's a solid run. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, a lot. <laughs> um yeah, so we actually, yeah, we went pretty much all through high school together. And then I went to Kent State for my freshman year of college. And he was a senior in high school still at our hometown, which was like really weird. I hated Kent. And we'll talk about, we're going to do college stuff in our next episode. So we can definitely elaborate on our college experiences a lot more. Um, but it was really hard doing, I was three hours away from him. And like, he was like still playing football and, you know, we were still dating. So it was really weird. I came home a lot. And I think a lot of it was because of him. So we ended up, I ended up transferring to the university of Kentucky, which is where he was going into his freshman year at, at the time, I didn't think I was transferring to be with him, but looking back now, (laughs) you did. It was definitely a strong influence. (laughs) Yeah. I remember Um, pausing for a second. I remember when that happened. Well, we all remember when that happened. But we remember asking, Colleen, like, are, do you want to do this, like, for the right reasons, or are you going for him? And, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hiding your face. Um, <laughs> like, honestly, though, like, I mean, UK has an amazing journalism program. So, like, yeah. Yeah. And one at the time. So we thought <laughs> like mental health wise, it's been it's been great. I don't think I would have ever lasted at Kent State, but um yeah I definitely well I'm like I always pull whenever people would ask I always would pull the joke of like well actually I wanted to go there first so really who's following who (laughs) true (laughs) because I wanted to go to UK to begin with and my parents were like no like we're not paying for out-of-state tuition there's a ton of good schools in Ohio and then they saw how miserable I was spring semester of my freshman year and they were like go visit (laughs) um but we actually ended up deciding to live together which was also for a wrong reason because we knew that we were going to be at each other's places all the time anyways. And um, we were like, what's the point of us living in the dorms, which are like outrageously expensive when we can save a ton of money just living together. Um, And I don't think that we were fully ready for that. Um, I actually made a PowerPoint slide to convince my parents into letting me transfer and live to live with him. (laughs) Um, so yeah, we lived together for um, the first semester. It went as well as it could have. I think we were very much in like the honeymoon phase of like, oh my God, we've been dating for three years now. We're living together, like, oh, doing, doing like big adult stuff. Um, and then in December, both of our depression had gone so bad and we had just, we were starting to outgrow each other and just go our separate ways. And I pulled the plug and I may have gotten a little bit too much alcohol in my system and I might have called him and I might have broken up with him over the phone (laughs) Um, and Chris might have been there for it (laughs) maybe I don't know if he knows that (laughs) uh yes I think he does 
I mean, he probably figured because you were at Ohio State when it happened. Yeah. So, yeah. Good times. yeah. And then it was pretty much just a shit show and a half after that. Um, we decided to continue to live together because I pushed for us to get a two bedroom um, just in case. And I am very happy that I did. So we at least each had our own space and our own beds and our own rooms, which helped a lot because it sucked. We lived together for five months broken up and that was terrible. So I can't even imagine what it would have been like if we were sharing the same bedroom and like sleeping in the same bed because that would have sucked. <laughs> I think that like the intention was well there. And I think that I honestly think that it was really smart for you guys to move in together. I remember all of us friends were kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. So were our parents. Are you kidding? We had to have a family meeting, all of us. We all sat down, his parents and my parents and the two of us. And we all sat down at my dining room table and literally figured out all of the pros and cons of doing this. Yeah. Because, I mean, it was that's a big step, especially mm-hmm. like... When- especially because I was... Was I 19? I think I was 19 when we moved in together and he was 18. Yeah. 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 That's not right. When did you guys sign your lease? Do you remember? Was it like in the summer or was it before you left Kent? It was before I left Kent. I, it's also I, kind of crazy. Like, I mean, you guys have been, had been dating for a, a while mm-hmm. and like you, you also were like getting ready to be, he was, he wasn't even out of high school yet. when this was Yeah. And, uh, but it's also just crazy because like you guys weren't, I mean, you came home like every weekend from Kent. Yeah. But, like, you weren't together a lot. No, um, I would literally come home and like go to his football games and we would maybe hang out Saturday and that was it. Yeah. And he came up and visited me a couple of times. Yeah. Well, and I mean, honestly, like, like financially, that was very smart. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if it was worth it. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I mean, I don't, I don't like think that we're meant to be together though. So I think we would have broken up somehow at some point. I think it just sped up the process. I think that that's a very defining moment too. Well, and my parents kept warning me and kept saying like, you really see a true person when you like, when you live with them. But like when, when he, when I was a senior in high school and he was a junior, like that summer in between, like he pretty much slept here every night. And if he wasn't here, I was sleeping at his place. Like we literally got into a routine of like, we would both, like sleep at the other person's house we would get up and go to work and then like hang out with our friends and come back and do it all over again like there was a point where my mom and I were talking about it and she was like I literally like I make dinner for four people now instead of three like I am just I've gotten accustomed to the fact that like he's probably going to be here for dinner and if not he's going to be here for lunch tomorrow to eat leftovers (laughs) so we already kind of felt like we had lived together in a weird way um but yeah it was it's, I don't know, when I talk about it, like, I feel like I'm, like, projecting over myself and talking about a completely different girl because so much has changed since then. So it's really weird. And it's weird that, like, I was, like, a sophomore in college. It seems like forever ago, honestly. It, yeah, and I think the pandemic has, like, made it seem even longer ago because last year was, took freaking forever. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but, like, also, like I said, I think that that's a really defining moment when you move in with someone to... Yeah. Because like your mom said, you're not going to know truly who someone is until you live with them. Yeah. Well, and I remember when I came home and I told them that I had, that we had broken up, um, my parents felt so guilty. Like my dad was like, we never should have let them live together. This is our fault. Like all this stuff. And I was like, no, like, I'm glad that we broke up at 19 or I was 20 at the time so like 20 and 19 rather than finding out and like you know we get, we get through college and then we move in together afterwards so we're like what 22 23 and mm-hmm. I was like I would rather find out now yeah yeah um but yeah I mean for me I would want to do the same thing I probably wouldn't have done it as young <laughs> as you but like, like, you learn <laughs> I mean true but like that's also a different situation because you'd been dating for like three or four years at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we had been together, I mean, longer than some marriages have lasted in our hometown. So. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And like, even my mom's first marriage, like she, uh, 
she was married she they dated for like two years and they were only married for like five months so she was like even the span of my entire relationship and a marriage you've lasted longer than yeah and I was like that's true <laughs> yeah I mean that also just kind of shows the difference in relationships now mm-hmm. then. yeah I know, like for like for my parents we kind of talked about this in the last episode they dated for a year got engaged on their year anniversary and then got married on their two-year anniversary so they mm-hmm. were all together for two years before they got married my parents were together for three months yeah so my parents story is really interesting because my parents grew up down the road from each other like literally my mom could see my dad's front porch from her front porch and vice versa and like my mom was in eighth grade when he was a senior which seems like a big gap like when you're talking about school wise but they like rode the bus together (laughs) and that was it um and then my dad went off and got married twice had my sister with his first one and then my mom got married once And, um, then they, when my mom was going through her divorce and he had already been divorced from his second wife, they started calling each other for some reason. I don't know. They somehow got back into communication. And what's really weird is that like my dad and sister came to my mom's first wedding and my sister caught the bouquet at her first wedding. Yeah. And my grandpa was there too, because like I said, they all grew up down the road from each other. And my grandpa leaned into my dad and was like, you're going to marry her someday. They weren't talking. They like the wedding at her wedding. Yeah. Yep. Or something along those lines. I don't know if he said Mary, but he said like, you're going to end up with her or something like that. That's and funny. my dad was like, what? She just got married. Like, what are you talking about? We're literally at her wedding. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it, it happened. And um, this might actually asked them the other day if I could tell this story on here. Um, so they had been together for three months. My sister is 12 at the time. So she would have been like in like fifth or sixth grade, I think. Yeah. Something like that. Um, so my dad was living in an apartment um, outside of London. And my mom came in and he was like, Hey, like we need to talk. And she was like, yeah, like I, I agree. We need to talk about like, like, you know, where we're headed and stuff. And he was, Uh, he was sitting on the toilet, taking number two. (laughs) Your dad was on the toilet when he was trying to have this conversation with your mom? Yeah. And just like had the door open. And my dad goes, I think we need to slow down. And my mom said, oh, I was going to say, I want to get married. (laughs) (laughs) Such a Christina thing to do, honestly. Yeah. If you know my mom, mom, she does. She's a very, uh very strong-headed woman (laughs) and that pretty much was like he never got down on one knee like literally after that on the toilet toilet. literally after that he was like all right let's do it (laughs) let me wipe first and i'll kiss you (laughs) nasty yeah i love i just i love that story because especially for like the time that they um were growing up and stuff like i feel like stuff was still like very traditional you know, very much like ask permission from the family and all that stuff. And so I think it's hilarious that I think it like sums up their relationship. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. If you know my parents, it's like, yeah, yep. Mm-hmm, that's it. Yep. <laughs> Makes sense. Nobody yep. else. <laughs> Makes sense for them. And now they're going on 25 years. So they must be doing something right. <laughs> I know. Well, cause like we kind of talked about my parents really or relationship build up and stuff. Cause we talked about how Colleen's dad and my dad used to be really, really, really like, they were like best friends. Um, when they're in their like younger twenties, right out of high school kind of thing mm-hmm. around together for a while. And then they were at like a stoplight or like by burger chef in London or something. Yeah. And my mom just so happened to pull up beside them in the truck. And my dad said, I'm going to marry her someday. And your Mitch, your dad was like, what <laughs> you might want to try talking to her first <laughs> uh, yeah. Which, like, I, my parents didn't even tell me that story your dad i wonder like, if your dad remembers i don't know I need to you need to that. ask him ask. but yeah and then um they're two of their my mom's really good uh best friend that was a lady was dating my dad's really good friend that was a guy and so they were like oh let's like set up Doug and Brenda and like you know mm-hmm. see where it happens and they did and then they ended up being the 
best man and maid of honor at my parents' wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> so, kind of funny, kind of cute. And then they build our house together. Like, yeah. not like got it built, built it together. It's like mm-hmm. a very notebook-esque kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Except uh, they did it together. He didn't do it for her. <laughs> correct. <laughs> My mom was also like towards the end of it getting built. My mom was pregnant with my dad, or my dad, my <laughs> brother. <laughs> my mom was pregnant with my brother. And so, well, I mean, technically, she was pregnant with your dad. I guess. Technically, technically. I, mean, I guess. I get. Uh, that's true. But it's just kind of yeah, weird. She was pregnant, so she was just like, I can't really help. Sorry. So then it became more of a, like a family thing. So then, mm-hmm. like our neighbors helped put in the steps, like our steps in our house and stairs, I guess. And like, yeah, we had aunts and uncles, great aunts and uncles, grandparents. Yeah. I'm sure your dad came and helped. <laughs> <He's> surprised. <laughs> so yeah, my dad remembers him building it and how much work it took. It took years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Years. Because our house isn't very small. <laughs> no, no. And especially because it like has a full size basement that is the size of the house. Mm-hmm. So that was yeah. a lot too. Yeah. I so I remember my, yeah, my parents got married and they, like, they didn't live together before they got married. They got married and then bought a house together. My parents. Yeah. Yeah. And it was very like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Cause that's how my parents got married. And then my mom was living in a house in London mm-hmm. and my dad ended up moving in with her once he could, they got back from his honey, their honeymoon. Yeah. And then uh, they lived there until they started building my house. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and we were talking about how, like, that used to be the trend of, like, you would, you know, you would date, and then you would get married, then you would move in together, and then you would have a kid, where we feel yeah. like now with our generation and with, like, millennials and Gen Z, it's completely flipped. Now mm-hmm. it's, like, live together or have a baby, and then get married. Yeah. So yeah. it's a complete... Which I mean, like, hey, more power to you. Yeah. yeah. Do what makes you happy, but couldn't be me. <laughs> Yeah. Well, like from my experience, like I'm like, I definitely like next person, next serious relationship. I'm definitely like, yeah, we're living together before you, before you put a ring on it because I need to see your true colors. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. Totally agree. I, I don't know. Cause I also grew up in the mentality of like, oh, we're not supposed to live with anybody like until we're married and stuff. But like, Mm -hmm. I couldn't imagine not because Kind of like, I wouldn't want to go through like, I mean, no offense to you, obviously. Like, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to go through like that kind of situation. But like, also I would want to, because I would want to know. Yeah. Can I live with this person for the rest of my life? Like, are we in it? Like, to, are we in it, in it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and I think that's why it took my parents so much convincing because they were like, this isn't like the normal route people take. And I was like, okay, what about our relationship is normal? Like we've, we've never fallen, followed the like, um, what society believes is correct when it comes to relationships so I was like why start now (laughs) yeah 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 because like I mean I personally also like not having like been in a serious serious Mm -hmm. relationship I couldn't imagine doing that yet and I mean it would I would want to be with someone for a while before that would happen yeah well like my advice is for anybody that I mean I feel like it doesn't matter what age you're at but like it sounds I know like all of our parents say it. I feel like we've always heard people say it and you're just kind of like okay yeah whatever people always harp on like you have to keep communicating and I always thought that's like that's so easy right nope (laughs) it's always the first thing with my experience and like from talking to other couples it's always the first thing that goes out the door and Mm -hmm. then after that, it either crumbles from there or you start communicating again. And that's something that definitely happened with the two of us. I mean, we were living under the same roof and we completely stopped talking to each other. Like how sad because that has become a norm. Mm -hmm. Like it's crazy. Like I think that part of it, and like, I'm not going to be one of those people that's like anti-technology or something. (laughs) Love technology, love social media, all that kind of stuff. But I feel like that's it's because of that, because we're not have we don't have, to have like help. face-to-face conversations and stuff. And so like, also, I think that a lot of people that are younger or even older, you're living with someone. So you just expect them to know everything. And then yes, don't. that was a big, a big place where we got is we, I mean, 
you can talk to like anybody that we hung around. They used to always say that like we were like the girl and boy versions of each other. We would always finish each other's sentences. We I could figure out what he was thinking at with a glance and vice versa. But mm-hmm. when we started living together, a lot of mental health and just life stuff came into play. We both got depressed for two completely different reasons. And we went from finishing each other's sentences to having no idea what the other person was thinking. And we were both feeling stuff so strongly at the time that like neither of us, I don't think knew how to put it into words yet. Cause we were still trying to process how shitty our lives were becoming. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I want to also just like, of course, growing up, like being in like upper middle school, high school is like a very defining moment for people. Mm-hmm. But if you end up going to college, just like figuring out college is hard. And especially for you, you were transferring. So you kind of knew what college was like, but you went to a completely different university in a totally different state. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew what to expect from an educational standpoint, but like when it comes to like my social life, I felt like a freshman. I felt like I was in the same spot that he was because we were both trying to find friend groups and we were both trying to figure out our way socially. Right. Yeah. Which was something that was hard because he hardly ever left the apartment and didn't really have friends until after we broke up. So I kind of felt like I was alone in that part. Yeah. And I mean, that makes it difficult. And like, I mean, and f- feeling for him too, which like, it's good to be social in college and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, I feel like part of the reason why I, which we're going to talk more about like college things mm-hmm. in the next episode. Yeah. But like, I feel like the reason why I was able to be more social and like do that was because my freshman year I lived in a dorm mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. had to yeah that's how I felt too that I've never met before uh-huh. whereas like he's in a relationship with you and so he's leaning on you more yeah. and so and you're living off campus in an apartment by yourselves how's he going to meet people other than people in class yeah which like I mean I hated living in the dorm so much you're literally in a box like <laughs> you're kind of in a uh luxury prison cell it kind of feels like depending yeah. on what school you go to but like a part of me kicks him, like kicks him, but a part of me doesn't because he never lived in a dorm. Yeah. Which like, I mean, I hated living in a dorm. Mm-hmm. I lived in a dorm for a year and a half. And then before I transferred and then and it was, ah, I mean, I made, see, it, it sucked from a living aspect. Yeah. But I loved the social aspect. At first I was like, ew, yeah. I don't like mean- this, but yeah. It put me out of my shell and I had to, I had to make friends and mm-hmm. like I wanted to, but like I had to. Yeah. So. Well, and like, I, uh, I still talk to every, about every week. Um, like my three good friends from Kent, like we still have yeah. stayed in touch after all these years. Oh so. yeah. I still talk and have like snaps. A few friends from my, from Wilmington college where I originally mm-hmm. went. Yeah. But okay. Well, we're talking about relationships. Should we tell some stories? Yes, Colleen has some stories. Because <laughs> um, I've done the long-term thing. I've done the serious thing. I've done the fling thing. I've done the hookup thing. I've done the not so serious. I've done the casual. So yeah. Done all the things. Done all the things. <laughs> Especially after a serious relationship, you're like, okay, I want attention from somebody, but I don't want to be in a relationship for a while. Right. So I definitely... Uh, I feel as if I went through my string of shitty people for about like a year and a half after we broke up, Mm -hmm. I think I had to pay my dues. (laughs) It's hard to go from like having like being in a serious relationship that you're living with someone to how do I date again? (laughs) Yeah, it, it didn't help because after we, you know, we moved out in May of 2019, I think, and I like thought like, oh, like the chapter's closed. I can finally move on now. Like, you know, I'm not seeing him every day. And, um, you know, I can maybe, maybe it's time to start talking to other people. We had been broken up for five to six month, months at this point. And, oh, was I wrong? Because we still managed to be toxic to each other and stay in each other's lives for about a year after that. So um, there was a, a phase where I was going between talking to him again and trying to figure that out to then talking to other people so that was a very mentally fun part of my life (laughs) yeah not sure love how that goes (laughs) i mean i I i've never experienced but hey (laughs) yeah yeah. um 
Yes. Yeah, so actually the first guy I talked to, um, after getting out of a long-term relationship, it was about a year after this was the first guy that I actually took kind of serious. Um, so I was living in a new house with four other girls at this point. And, um, I met this guy on, I want to say Tinder, I think. I Bumble. It might've been Bumble. I wasn't on Bumble for very long, but I think it might've been Bumble. I think you're right. Um, which we'll talk about dating apps in a second because we have our own thoughts on that. <laughs> Got opinions. <laughs> yeah. So um, this guy didn't go to college. Cool. Had a full-time job. So I didn't really care. Um, he was 25. Um, so I was 20 at the time, I think, 20, 21, um, turning 21. And I was like, ooh, like an older guy. Like I've, I've until that point, I'd only really dated people younger than me. So I was excited. And we dated for three solid months um, like going on dates, like we were hanging out all the time, things were going really well. And I never had like, I had a bad gut feeling that I remember talking to you about it. Um, and there was just something off, but I didn't have any like clues or indication. There was no red flags, um, which then was a red flag. (laughs) And, um, means there's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. So he ended up making an Instagram because COVID had just started. So this, we talked between like February, I would have been 21 then it was February to like, um, April, May of last year. So when COVID last year, yeah, literally (laughs) when COVID like had seriously hit. So, um, we were like, you know, trying to avoid the pandemic and all that fun stuff. And then school shut down and everything. And, um, he decided to make an Instagram because he was bored because of COVID and he didn't have one before that. So he made one and, you know, post a couple pictures, whatever. A couple weeks goes by. He posts a picture holding a baby. And I was like, oh, that must be his niece or, you know, cousin or something. And someone comments and says, is that yours? And he replies and puts, yes, ha ha. And I was like, okay, yes, ha ha. Like, yeah, ha ha. Like, you know, like, no, I don't have a kid. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or like, or like yeah, yeah, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, this could be too different. So I flew down the stairs to my roommates. We were all sitting on the couch and I was like, what do I do? And like, they had all met this him. This man's child. Is this this man's yeah. child? And so like, they like had all met him and they were like, what? Like, did you see this coming? And I was like, no, I had no idea. So we all took bets that night and we were like, okay, half of us, I think out of the five of us, I think Two of us were like, no, I was one of the, I was in disbelief because I didn't want it to be true. (laughs) So two of us were like, no, he doesn't have a kid. And then the other three were like, no, he has, he has a kid. So we're all sitting there in the living room. They're like, you have to call him and find out like right now. And I was like, I I don't want to address this. (laughs) Um, So they all like were quiet. We were all sitting on my like big sofa. I call him and put it on speaker And he was like, Hey, how's your day? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I was like, sorry. Until right now, I got a question. (laughs) Yeah, I I have a question. And he went, Oh God, I don't like the sound of that. And I go, I don't know how to word this. So I'm just going to come out and say it. (laughs) Do you have a kid? Long pause. (laughs) Like to the point where I was like, hello? (laughs) You're still there. You're still there. (laughs) So long pause. And right when I'm about to be like, you're there. He goes, yeah, I have two. Yikes. Mic drop. <laughs> I was like, what? You, know, you hear about this stuff? Okay, so I was with some friends this weekend, not to pause you, but like, you hear about this stuff? But like, you don't, it doesn't happen to people you know. No, it's like okay. a, a bad Lifetime movie. <laughs> I know. I was talking to one of my uh, friends this weekend that I was with and something similar happened to her. Yeah. And I, she was, the thing was though, it was a little more sticky because <laughs> this is his he was married oh. and he had children. Oh. So he but then he was like dating oh god my friend. Oh god. And she didn't know. Oh god. And so then she found out and was he had like three kids, a wife, damn, all this stuff. And she was like a whole other life. What? <laughs> so yeah, yeah crazy yeah. so yeah so then when he said yeah I have two I had a ton of questions because like 
there was never like a time we couldn't hang out. Like, you know, like there was never a time where like, if I wanted to hang out, he was there. So I was like, if you have two kids, how did like, don't you got to watch them? Like, how's that work? So they both ended up, I think they both live out of state. So he like, didn't see them very often. And I was like, ah, okay. That makes sense. But then I had so many other questions because I was like, okay, you have two baby mamas that clearly don't claim you and want to be with you, but you're the father of their kids. (laughs) so and they both moved away from you (laughs) so I was like I have a lot of questions and then um he ended up like having to go and we ended up talking about it later that night and like I was like what were you gonna do be like will you be my girlfriend oh by the way and he told me he had no intentions of ever telling me I don't know if I remember that Mm -hmm. told me over the phone I did not plan on telling you yeah and I was like, why? Whoa, whoa. He was like, there's just some things you don't need to know. What? So then after I found out the red flags were just they were woo. Every <laughs> corner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that he wasn't gonna tell you. I was like, did you think what? I wasn't gonna find out? <laughs> so like what who's to say, like, what if it would have continued to do well and you got like engaged or something, got married, was he gonna tell you then? Hey, my kids are gonna be like the ring bearer and like the flower girl on our wedding oh by the way i don't think no, I, told you. No, yeah, no. I have children <laughs> okay i forgot about the most messed up part so one of them is seven right and the other one at the time that i found out was seven months old that means when the kid was born when we like when we first started talking three months ago the kid would have been four months old like freshly into this world yeah and i was like hands on the hips <laughs> what the heck <laughs> did you ever see him again after that oh no, hell no oh, <laughs> no so the, so like you know i told him like i want nothing to do with this like i felt like i just felt icky like i was like you had no plans on telling me like blah Colleen, stepmama Colleen. Yeah. So, and I, yeah. So then that became a joke between our friends. And I was like, uh, I'm, nope. Like, I'm 21, freshly 21. Like, having kids is very much a deal breaker still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Not uh, for me. Not for me. He texted me the next day and was like, hey, let's hang out. And I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> um, I think we, I think he ended up showing up at my house because he wanted to try to like smooth things over. And I was like, and my roommate was like, uh, Colleen. And I was like, well, he was like, he's here. And I was like, why? <laughs> um, yeah. But then I like came home the following weekend and like, he texted me like nothing had happened. And I was like, bro, what are you doing? And he was like, well, like, can't we still like talk and be friends? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm good. Mm, I'm good. Tell me that you ha- you did not disclose yeah. that you have children. Yeah. So as if this situation couldn't get any worse the following week i (laughs) loosely started talking to somebody that was like a friend of a friend of a friend and um it lasted all of a week and he uh put his ex-girlfriend in the hospital for uh physical reasons and i was like i'm done with men (laughs) i threw in the towel (laughs) at that point i remember after that i was like that is my sign to delete all of my dating apps and I don't think I talked to anybody last summer because the pandemic was happening. No, the pandemic was happening. And I pretty much was living life by my pool with a mark in hands at all times and did not have a care in the world. <laughs> yeah, I was unbothered to say the least. <laughs> I, I just can't understand to wrap my head around it. Well, then you also had that one guy that you talked to for a short period of time who took your bracelet continues to wear it on all of his instagram posts yeah so we weren't even dating like oh you're just we we talked a couple times he was the first guy i like met like i had like actually like met up with in person from tinder Mm -hmm. so yeah took my bracelet off my wrist didn't think anything of it put it on his i was like all right fine whatever i'll give it back and then like next time we hang out and we ended up it fell off and we ended up not talking i think he ended up talking to somebody else or something and i wasn't heard about it i didn't care and like it wasn't that deep yet and then he like posted a picture on instagram like a couple months later and i was like it's my bracelet that's 
that's mine. <laughs> he, he continues to wear it. Like the most, his most recent Instagram picture, he's wearing your bracelet, right? I don't think the most recent one, but okay. definitely like last October, oh. like around Halloween. Like it had been year. It had been a year. Yeah. I like talked to him before I talked to the guy with kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he's known at now. So, yeah, it's just weird. Weird. So weird. Yeah. Yeah. But it's weird because, like, so on to, like, dating apps. Yeah. I, our next subject. It's so weird. <sighs> they rub me the wrong way. <laughs> I just, you know. I'm a fan. Like, my favorite is, like, honestly, and, like, not to sound like I am not a person who, like, takes charge and, like, you know, starts conversations. But, like, I respect Bumble. We yeah. don't know what they want. Mm-hmm. I respect that. Yeah, and it's really cool because it actually um, is owned by a woman. A woman started it. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, I applaud that. That is the one that I have talked to the most people on. Yeah. So mine has been Hinge. Like I feel like I've had all of them. Obviously, Tinder is just known for hookups at this point, and I I only know a couple people that like had actually like had relationships from tinder but i feel like it was like a while ago i I don't i haven't heard any success stories (laughs) yeah um well had a couple close friends no success stories yeah and bumble's all right i do like the fact that i can reach out first but yet again i also don't because sometimes i'm like what do i what do i like you can only come up with so many cheesy pickup lines (laughs) well then you gotta think about guys gonna do that on tinder and hinge yeah but i have had the most luck um like i actually have like three or four like guy friends that like we like found like we like started talking on hinge and it turned into a friendship yeah so and like i had never heard of hinge until i like came up to ohio state one weekend and one of our friends it was um josie's friend it was avery i think oh yeah yeah she was like are you on hinge and i was like no what's that and she was like you have to get on it like people take it really seriously and i will say like i've had like the most like actual like genuine conversations with people on hinge yeah I see uh, that's what I was like kind of going through like when I was like my senior year of college and I was like you know looking for a relationship but like not having luck but then also like why am I looking for a relationship at like the point that I was in in life yeah I'll get into in a minute but um then I was talking to my friend Sydney who has hinge and she met her now boyfriend of like two or three I think it's been two years wow and they're like a major like success story like they are doing well hmm. the- i have heard more success stories from hinge and mm-hmm. for some reason hinge has like the um persona around it that it's taken a little bit more seriously right i'm personally i think i'm gonna delete hinge <laughs> because- <laughs> i have deleted all of them <laughs> i mean i see the thing is it's like i just never get on them like i'll get on them like maybe once a month I go through phases like I either have them fully and I'm like fully active on them or they're not on my phone at all like it's zero or 100 yeah and like because I get those freaking notifications it's like you haven't been active so we can't put your information out there because we don't know what you like <laughs> <laughs> well shoot well <laughs> so, um, I don't know <laughs> but um no I've never had any luck with hinge I mean I've talked to a couple people on there but it never goes in the way that I want it to or something and just never works out so I think I'm going to delete it because that's the one that I've had the least yeah amount. it's funny because I have more friendships out of it than anything <laughs> that's funny yeah like but does Bumble and and Tinder have like those options to like meet friends instead of like relationships <laughs> Tinder doesn't it's only Bumble um which I actually think is really cool I know a lot of my friends that like have moved to new cities like they like go on like lunch dates to like find new friends <laughs> yeah it's really cool. and like you can see it on like I, I know like when I'm swiping through like you can like it says like looking for friends mm-hmm. I'll just move to a new city and stuff yeah and, like, I think it helps a lot I've heard about it more um with the pandemic going on just because like you know there's not just like you're not bumping into people like you used to before about it. <laughs> <laughs> I move I move here in the middle of a pan middle of a Panera bread (laughs) and and I luckily I have made friends Mm -hmm. but um not like a a ton but 
I mean, everything's like closed. So like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. You definitely have to try a little bit harder, get a little bit more out of your way. Right. Which things are trying to open back up. So thank, thank the Lord. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I just, I also, for me though, I just prefer to meet people in person. I just like to, my favorite thing to do, favorite, my preferred thing, whatever, how to go about like talking to someone is to watch her with her friends and like watch like what she like see what her personality is. See her interacting with people. Yeah, see her interacting with people and see like you can just tell so much mm -hmm. from one person to like watch them in their like in their state of comfort and in yeah, their, their mannerisms. Yeah. Yep. And then you're like, yep. Yeah. Well, here's some advice for the people. <laughs> um, I um, am a tall woman. I'm 5'11 to 6 foot, depending on the day <laughs> and depending on who you ask. And um, a lot of men are intimidated by me because I'm larger than the average male. And I have had so many men just, if you want to call them men, um, just put a note beside me and walk away. And I think that's so unattractive. Like, I think off the bat, that saying I am too insecure to even say hello to you, to even tell you my name. And every time someone does it, if I catch what happens, I literally yell at them and I'm like, Hey, come back. Yeah. Let's chat. Like, it's so easy to walk up. To, I think it's so much more flattering when someone walks up to me and says, Hey, my name is blah, blah, blah. I noticed you from across the room. I think you're even say, I think you're attractive, something, anything of just like, literally I had a guy in college. I was, I was a freshman. So I guess he might've been a freshman. I don't know. He might've just been nervous. And he literally wrote on a piece of paper. Hey, I like your jeans jacket. Text me sometime. Okay. I was really confused on what you meant by when you said I had yeah. to come up and write to me and walk away. And I was like, Oh, like she means like put like a little note on their like Bumble profile or something like no, like in person, like, yeah. He you like wrote you all like a wrote on a sticky note and was like, hey. It's happened like five or six times. That's so weird. Not just once. Yeah. No. And so the last time, <laughs> the last time it happened, this was like, not that, this was recently. Um, I don't know, not super recent. It was last semester. And my friends, my roommates and I, we were um, at a pub, I think in Lexington. And a guy walked up, put a sticky note, like right beside my hand. And then just kept walking. I didn't even read it. And I turned around and went, hi. <laughs> and then he like stopped. And I was like, come here. <laughs> and he walked over to me and I went, can you say hello? And he went, yeah. I went, okay, is that so hard? I went, you took it out of your way to write a note. <laughs> and I was like, am I that intimidating? And he was like, well, a little, yeah, now, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we had a very, I didn't find him that attractive. So I, you know, kind of took it and ran with it. And then he walked away and all of my roommates were like, yeah, like that's mm, nope. You're, don't text that one. And I was like, didn't plan on it. <laughs> it's weird. That's so weird. I've it never, I don't so I've ever school. heard that. It sounds so middle school of you. <laughs> it's like passing notes in like middle school, elementary, like, hey, you're cute. Want a date? Yep. No. Oh, yeah. check that no. Like the song. <laughs> no, but like I mean that's for real. Yeah, like that's yeah. what it was. Like, we're in college. Just walk I, up I have hi. my middle school elementary school relationships because I passed notes and said, hey, want to be my yeah. girl? <laughs> yeah. Well, and like the worst thing I'm gonna say to you is no, walk away. Like that's the worst thing. Or I'm gonna act like I have a boyfriend to get you to go away. Like right. Right. I'm gonna say hi back. Like, right. like yeah. we I um we had like a small like birthday gathering for one of my friends here and we all like there were like a, I mean there was only there wasn't a lot of us but it was like 10 or less mm -hmm. and like none of us really knew each other because like I was new I brought my college roommate like some of them knew each other but they were also like some new friends that they had met through work or like something mm -hmm. and so we all just like went up and was like hey I'm Chris like just moved here recently this is what I'm doing for work like are you, are you from DC? Like, where you, like, you know, it's so like, that's what I don't understand. And part of it is probably because of the pandemic because now people yeah. are like, more less social. So mm -hmm. like, I understand that, but like, also just like, just talk to people. Like, why yeah. are you writing well, a note? <laughs> actually, 
actually well because of the pandemic I mean, like you know when you're out at restaurants and stuff like you're encouraged and like even bars and stuff you're encouraged to like stay at your table and like stay with your party for good reason social distance but actually right. it was like two weekends ago um we had two guys walk over to our table and it was me and my two other roommates and we had like we were sitting at like a picnic type table but like it was like all four sides had seats if you know what I mean and so we had one side completely open because there's only three of us and they walked over and they had like chips and nachos in their hand and they were like hey like we didn't finish this like would you guys like to finish it and at first we were like that's so weird and um we're like no we're good thanks and they were like well like do you guys like mind if we like sit down and finish them with you and we were like ah <laughs> that's wow. what they're trying to do but I actually thought that it was kind of clever like how, how yeah. simple like yeah. They totally created an opening for themselves. Yeah. 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 And it, like gave us the option to be like, no, we're good. Like See, some people are like creative like that. And then some mm-hmm. people are sticky now. <laughs> and it was funny because at first we were like, why would we want to have your leftover chips? That's weird. Yeah. And then we were like, ah, that's what you're trying to do. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. I think for me, something like we mentioned it a couple times, like I've never been in an actual serious relationship. Yeah, and I actually wanted you to touch base on that a little bit. Yeah. So, which I feel like a lot of people, when they hear that, they're probably like, what the heck? Why? Like, you know, because you're, you're 23? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I, I was like, wait, you're not 22 anymore. <laughs> I my age and share how lonely I am, Colleen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, because about me is like, number one, when I was growing up, I was super, super quiet and not talkative. It's and so hard to believe because now you don't shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And so like, wasn't super anti, like was kind of anti-social, like had like a couple friends, like in elementary school. Like, I mean, was, did the normal stuff, like went to birthday parties and like stuff like that. But like, yeah. I just wasn't super talkative. Yeah. You played sports and stuff. And then like once I got more into like middle school high school then I started to like open up more Mm -hmm. then like once I was in high school I really dove into a lot of different things like youth organizations and clubs and stuff like that and sports so I in my mind while everyone was doing this stuff I was like I'm not even thinking about like having a girlfriend right now because like I am like building that resume for college like I am doing all this kind of stuff and I'm busy. I had meetings like three to four days in each well, night of the week. And you were like president of a lot of things when we were in high school. So mm-hmm. when, and like, you were also like playing soccer. So like when you were getting like out of practice, you were then going home and preparing for these meetings and leading these groups of people right. where other people were getting off practice and going, hanging out with their boyfriend or girlfriend. Right. Exactly. And like, yeah. Cause like, I mean, when I was like a junior and senior, I was president of like three or four things at the same time Mm -hmm. and so that obviously took up a ton of my time and then like I mean I was getting to the point where I was taking those like the ACT and trying to prepare for that and then like trying to figure out what college I wanted to go to because I didn't know know. (laughs) and um so yeah never really thought about that I mean I had like I talked to some people like here and there Mm-hmm. kind of thing but nothing like super serious because also I knew that I didn't want to mm-hmm. and then um so then went to college uh, went to Wilmington for a year and a half and like kind of talked to like a few like explore like you know like kind of like did the college thing of like yeah. trying to get to know myself get to know people kind of mm-hmm. thing of like okay and I mean kind of talked to someone like a girl there but nothing really and then I also though like the thing was is I knew that I didn't want to there Mm -hmm. because I was like after my first year I was like I'm gonna transfer out because I wanted to change my major all this kind of stuff and then ended up going to Ohio State and once I got to Ohio State um I started like getting involved in more things, joined a fraternity, did some stuff, like whatever, was making friends. And like, my thing was, is like, when I was going through college, my, what I wanted to do was number one, I needed to like, do get my education, like get ready to like get a degree, get a job. Mm -hmm. But then also I was looking more towards the future of, I want to make memories here and not get sucked up in a relationship Mm -hmm. that's going to take away from me being free every weekend or like me, like 
going out and being able to do fun things like throughout the week with friends and said, I'm going to be well, like up in somebody's house, like chilling. Yeah. Well, what, what's, what's interesting about your situation is once you did kind of open up your mind to being a little bit more serious with somebody and that girl did end up entering, entering the picture, then you were like, what am I doing? I'm going to move to DC. Like, right. What- well, see, and that's what I was getting to. Like then, like once I got to <laughs> freaking Ohio state, like I, I was like, I mean, I had talked about moving to DC, like when I was in like high school and stuff. But when I was like a junior in college, I was like, yep, I want to move to DC. Like, that's what's going to happen. And so kind of talked to someone and I mean, it was like fine and everything, but in the back of my mind, I was always like, I plan on moving to DC. Like, should I really be like trying to find a relationship? Like at like that person didn't want to move to DC. Like, yeah. We didn't really like talk about that. Like we didn't get like serious like that. No, like no. we talked about like what our future plans were and like what we kind of wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And she wanted to stay in Ohio and like Northwest Ohio or like whatever. Yeah. And I was like, okay, like that's awesome for you. And like, we're going to continue talking, but like, it's not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not. Well, doing what's, that. <laughs> something else that's very different about the two of, two of us is like, I see you're taller than me and have dark hair that's my type (laughs) where I feel like you very much have like a very um more detailed specific person that is your type I think you have imagined it differently than I do right well and yeah and because now like I'm in a stage where I'm getting oriented with living here and being here and so I don't plan on moving away from here for a very long time if Mm -hmm. ever yeah and um so now is the time where I should be like looking for a relationship which like I mean I'm trying like somewhat but I'm also like we're living in the middle of the pandemic like how am I supposed to do that but to go back to what you were saying yes like because I'm such a career driven person that I could Aries because (laughs) I'm an Aries yes (laughs) (laughs) and um I just couldn't imagine being with someone that's not goal like driven and not like a hardworking person Mm -hmm. and I mean especially like here you also have to take into place and like take into consideration I guess of like there's a ton of different cultures here which is awesome Mm -hmm. but if you're trying to have someone that like relates to you like whether that's politically or like you know with your aspirations in life or like similar like career goals and stuff like that got all different like types of people who want like different things so it's hard because especially like with living in the nation's capital it's a very political place Mm -hmm. so like you say you're something and somebody doesn't like it yeah then you're just it's just not gonna work which is also another interesting topic because um a lot of my friends at school um they don't have the same views as their significant other Mm -hmm. and they're like how are we supposed to like how how are we going to be together we don't think the same and I know that's like often, yeah, yeah. I know that that's often a like fear of some people. And I always come back with my mom and dad. There, I have never met two people that are so the same but so different. Like their brains just process and heal and focus on things in a completely different aspect. And mm-hmm. on top of that, my dad is a diehard conservative, and my mom is a diehard Republican. And they make it work. Wait, you just said your mom is a Republican. Oh, <laughs> sorry. My mom is a diehard Democrat. Sorry. <laughs> Mom's a Democrat. Dad's a Republican. So they're very much. And then I fall in the middle. <laughs> right. Right. Which is. Yeah. yeah. And so. It's just interesting because also like people get up on a high horse about things here. So it's different. Yeah. Well, and I, the only reason that it has worked for them is they they do both have open mindsets and. Right they are able to like, you know, we might not agree on something, but that's okay. We don't have to agree on everything. Exactly. And see, like, that's how, that's how I view things. Mm-hmm. It's like, I, I'm open to like, you know, any political view. I'm fine with it. You know, like I have a lot of friends that tend to be on the like other side of the aisle than me. Yeah, me too. So, and I'm completely fine with it. And we talk about it and it's great. And, you know, but yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's a different world here. And yeah, so kind of understandable. Stable. But yeah, so I guess with me just being busy uh, with life stuff, and then it's it's also I tell myself too is I think that people um, who relate to me on not having a 
real like you know strong relationship within their first couple of years of life and stuff are we tend to see relationships as you're dating to get married yes which and, is where we should be at right now r- right mm-hmm. and so and like i told a friend that the other day i think we talked about it in the last episode i was talking to rachel about this mm-hmm. and i was like we're not dating to get married i mean some people are like yeah. i mean you're like getting closer if you're like 30 40 you're now and you're just like living life and you're finally like you know what i want to get married mm-hmm. i want a wife i want a husband you know then all right cool but like for us that are in our younger 20s we just need to experience things yeah live life so yeah. like Which we, was- i need to work on getting the mentality out of my head of like Chris, you're not dating to get married. You're mm-hmm. dating to date someone. And if it that that ends up being the end scenario, that's awesome. Yeah. You need to live life. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, that was something that I really struggled with um, after I got out of my four-year relationship because I came, be, we both became so dependent on each other mm-hmm. that afterwards it was like, it was... It was definitely a struggle, but it was also kind of beautiful in a way of like, I got to recreate myself. Um, It was always Colleen and blank. And um, now I was just Colleen. So I had to figure out who I was as an individual person, because for the last four years, my name always followed his. So, and I think that's, I think, I mean, I think we were dating. I mean, at one point I thought I was going to marry him. I mean, moved in together so I mean, like, you would think <laughs> yeah well, like, and it's like I kind of did it backwards because like now I'm dating since then I've been dating casually I haven't been dating to marry right. so yeah it's just it's so interesting because everyone has such a different path when it comes to this and but it's funny because you haven't been in a serious relationship but you're one of the first people I call when something comes up and I don't know what to do because I think because you haven't been in one you have such a raw outlook on everything and like you do you give great advice <laughs> I know well see so Stanley my former college roommate and I were talking like last week or something we're talking we were just talking about like relationships and stuff and I was like I give some pretty good advice like you know like because of different friends who were going through different things and he was like not to be not to be mean like I love you but like how (laughs) why (laughs) people come to me and I'm like don't don't you lie you've been you came to me before (laughs) I was like because I like, even though I've never been in like a real serious relationship, I've observed the mm-hmm. good, the bad, and the ugly. And let me tell you, they got some nasty stories, so they got some good stories. Yeah. And so I think that, like, for me, that does have a raw outlook on things. Like, I do give some good advice. And let me tell you, once <laughs> once I start dating somebody really seriously, I will be a bomb boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a pro by then. <laughs> I'll be a pro. You know what? <laughs> been there rode the ride with people we're good <laughs> yeah it's so funny you have kind of been like our life coach in a way of going through <laughs> some wonderful relationships <laughs> yeah <laughs> friendships and relationships good times yeah yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah uh we've been talking for an hour and eight minutes so should we transition into the game yeah I didn't realize that much time had gone by and I was like, oh, I haven't checked my phone in a while. How long have we been talking? And I was like, oh, an hour. <laughs> Zoom and be like, so. <laughs> I, think um, that I, I think that we talked about things good. Like, I thought it was good. Yeah. Um, do we want to end it with some advice and I can talk about loving yourself and like healing with past trauma? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to ask you? Do you want me to ask you and go into it? Yeah. Be like, since, you know, you've been in a serious relationship and done the thing. Do you have any advice? okay so wrapping up our topic of relationships (laughs) (laughs) um colleen you've been in a really serious relationship Mm -hmm. for a couple years you've done the casually dating stuff so what do you have what advice can you give others that are kind of similar or not even similar and they're just in their 20 they're 20 something and they're trying to figure out what to do about relationships. Yeah. Um, so I had like three to four things, um, come to mind that I think are staples, no matter what your situation is. Um, like the first one I said, you have to be able to communicate if you're not willing to communicate and you're going to have a guard up, then it's not going to work. 
Um, the second thing, and this is a hard one because it's definitely like a trial and error experience is you have to be willing to be vulnerable enough to vulnerable enough to have your heart open to letting somebody else in, but you also have to have your guard up enough to, you know, make sure that they're not a terrible person and they're not going to hurt you. So that is, it is hard to say. I don't really have much advice on that. Of like, you just have to feel it out. And Mm -hmm. sometimes you just have to hope that they're a great person and that they're not going to hurt you. I mean, that's the chance that we all take with friends and relationships. Um, But I think the biggest thing and the thing that I have had the most experience with, um, with dating other people is you have to be in a secure place within yourself. Um, you have to love yourself before you can fully love somebody else. And I think a big thing is to like, make sure that like you have your past trauma, you know, taken care of, or you're working on it, or you're aware of that stuff, because no matter what you think, if you don't love yourself or you have stuff from the past that you're still traumatized by, it's going to leak into the relationship. Even if you think it's not going to, it's inevitable, Um, so I just say like, make sure you're in a secure place with yourself. Like, don't be afraid to work on yourself, um, and sacrifice a little bit of yourself to then share that with somebody else. Mm -hmm. I would say that's my like three to four things. Good stuff. Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Been through the trenches. (laughs) Been through the trenches. It's been some war crime. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but I mean, I've had those issues with myself before. I mean, there was definitely a time where I was like, wow, I don't love myself right now. So uh, I probably shouldn't date anybody. Yeah. So I mean, it, that, I think that that's really key too, is knowing yourself, like you said, knowing your worth, mm-hmm. but like also like, I mean, also like, it's just very mature to know, like, yeah, well, I'm like- ready for a relationship or I'm not ready. Mm-hmm. Well, like, I'm very open about the fact that like, I go through there, I go to therapy once a month, like, I'm very open about my mental health and I've had, um, people in the past that are like, "Mm, yeah, I've been through a lot of trauma, but I don't want to deal with it. So, and like, they have literally said, this is just how I am. You're going to have to take it or leave it. And not one, I find that unattractive Two, I don't find that fair to me because I'm actively working on myself. I like strive to not say, this is just how I am. You're going to have to deal with it because I don't want to, I don't want to be that way. I don't want to have to say that to people. So I I think it's almost unfair in a way of like, okay, I'm working day in and day out to make sure that myself is the best version of myself, not only for me, but for this relationship. I don't think it's too much to ask for that in return. No, I I agree. Yeah. And it's one of those things, I mean, you can't, you can't force people to go get help. You can't force people to love themselves or to, you know, deal with stuff that's always in the back of their head. And that's, that's something that's like really hard is it just, it does have to be on their terms. Mm -hmm. Takes two to tango. That's right. That's what my parents always say. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to, I think those are my final thoughts, unless you have anything else you want to say, Chris, and then we can get on to our game for the episode. Yes. I would just say, similar to Colleen, just be open, be honest, be ready. And I mean, I think the best piece of advice that I've gotten recently about relationships is most likely it's going to come when you least expect it. That's what happened with my past mm-hmm. experience, like, and everything. It happens when it, you least expect it. And even, I, I don't know. I just, I also, for those that are, haven't had a lot of relationship experience, but want to, I would say, again, just be open, be honest. And I mean, obviously like it's a little sticky, like in a pandemic and stuff, yeah. just put yourself out there. What are you going to lose? Well, you and know? something I was going to say, and I hope that this is like something that people can admire Chris for with your situation. Like there, I know so many people that because of society's like pressure, so many people, I think our age, they're like, oh my God, I graduated college. Now I have to get married like that's the next thing or like that's what their cousins did or like you know their parents are pressuring them and saying like why aren't you bringing a girl home or a guy home like I admire you so much that like you're like you're comfortable with where you're at and you're content with the fact that of like yeah I haven't had very many relationships but like I'm working on myself and I'm going to be ready when one does present itself so don't be afraid to be that way don't think that you have to date somebody or marry somebody because we're 23 and that's what society says that you're supposed to do that is not, that is not what you have to do. Proven, proven evidence. Not what you have to do. 
No. Nor do I want to. The thought of getting married right no. now. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not interested in getting married. I'm not interested in having babies for a while. <laughs> No. And I was like, that's what your 20s are for. Like, I know, so that's what I'm saying. I had this conversation with my mom like a couple of weeks ago. I was like, mom, like I am a 20 something. I am living in the nation's capital. I'm just living life. Yep. I have no expectations for anything. Mm-hmm. I like, of course I would like to have a relationship. That's one thing. I want to be like really good at my job and be successful, like get promoted or like, however, whatever. Mm-hmm. and but just live life that's what your 20s are for gain experiences do what you want you're not tied down to anything go explore yeah, yeah. well and like where i'm at right now is like i've um you know my cat's behind at my door i'm gonna kill her um where i'm at right now is like i've had a thing on and off with a guy past couple of months and I've had this like overwhelming urge to be by myself and to be single and I keep pushing it to the side because I think he is a great person and I think that there could be potential there but I'm at the point where I'm like I need to listen to my gut and listen to my instincts and spend this time by myself as I transition out of college and into adult life so yeah Yeah. which I think the common theme that we've talked about today is relationships are on your own terms Mm -hmm. you get them yeah. Do it makes you happy and be open to what the future holds, I guess. Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing is having an open mindset with anything in life, really, not just yeah. relationships. Everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. and then after that, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, what, what's it called? Foreshadow or, uh, or, uh, get the viewers excited. Um, after next week's episode. So next week will be three. Our fourth episode, we're having our first guest. Yes, we are having and we're very excited. Yes, it's going to be an interesting topic, also. Mm -hmm. So, I'm excited to see what she has to say and us talking a little bit about things Mm -hmm. and wrapping that all together. It'll be it'll be different than this one, but around the same kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, cool stuff, cool stuff. Excited, right? Awesome. Well, I think this is time for us to say uh, peace and blessings. And we will, (laughs) we will talk to you all next week. Oh, we hope you guys have a good week. Yes.